Amazing, isn't it? The human body is sometimes capable of completely crazy things. And how about this? Looks strange, but everyone can do it with the help of organs that you don't even know about. Today, you'll find out what the holes in your eyelids are for, who put a small brain in your chest, and what a strange inheritance people have received from monkeys. Let's go. This is the skull of an adult man. It seems to be nothing unusual. And this is a skull of a child. Absolutely ordinary child. You see these strange things? Yes, you used to have these too. These are the teeth. Wait, what? Are you saying that when I was a child, I had this in my head? Oh my God. Uh, sorry, I was, I, was a I was a little shocked. As strange as it may seem, every person comes into the world with two sets of teeth at once. These are 20 milk teeth and 32 permanent teeth, which all stay with us for the rest of our life. Well, or until they fall out under the influence of some external factors. The first, that is, milk teeth begin to grow when a person stops feeding on mother's milk. But to keep the whole adult set of teeth, the jaw is still too small. Thus, milk teeth allow children to eat until their jaw is strong enough. All this time, the permanent set of teeth are also inside and just waiting for their time. And yes, it really is as creepy as it sounds. Nature loves to do strange things. Take a look at this photo. Do you see a tiny hole? To find it, you just need to slightly lower the lower lid. Hey, hey, just stay out of it with your dirty hands. There you go. Did you find it? This is the so-called lacrimal point. Behind it begins the lacrimal calliculi, lacrimal channel, which in turn leads to the lacrimal sac. All our tears that have not had time to fall down our cheeks dramatically get there. But if liquid had accumulated in people's cheeks when they were crying, we'd all have turned into sad hamsters. That's why there's a nasolacrimal canal. Through it, the liquid is drained into the nose, and then everything is clear. Yes, thanks to the lacrimal points for the fact that it's impossible to cry without all the snot. No beautiful movie crying. So it's not what we asked for, evolution. Oh, by the way, take a closer look at the photo. Do you see a strange fold in the corner of the eye? Well, what's that meaning? Get ready, it can be shocking because there's no point to it. This is the rudiment, that is the residual organ which only served our distant ancestors. Very, very distant. Actually, we're talking about birds, fishes, and reptiles, and in very rare cases, some mammals use this fold in the eye. Its meaning is to serve as a third eyelid, to protect the eye and moisture in it without losing sight. In other words, blink without blinking? After all, when you're a bird, one accidental closure of your eyes may well turn you into someone's lunch. But if you're human, you just have a funny thing in the corner of your eye. Okay, let's leave the birds and eyes alone and go a little lower. The fact that people have salivary glands in their mouth seems to be no secret to anyone. But that's not all. Right under the tongue, there are glands that allow you to do this. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Okay, actually spitting is something of bad manners. Somewhere you can even find special forbidding signs. But it's one thing to just not be nice and quite another to spit like a cobra. I don't think there are any signs about that anywhere. So when your tongue moves forward, some people accidentally release a jet of saliva from their mouth. This is called gleeking, and it's an advanced form of spitting. Snake spitting school. It can be caused by strong salivary ducts, too sharp movements, or even some products. For example, lemons. By the way, it's said that the concept of gleeking has existed for many years. It seems to be mentioned even in some of Shakespeare's plays. So if you suddenly spit in somebody's face while eating something sour, lay all the blame on a cobra or on Shakespeare. Can anything be cooler than a person's ability to spit like a snake? Well, at first we thought no, but then we discovered the possibility to create clouds. And no, we're not talking about the steam that comes out of your mouth in cold weather. To create this cloud, you don't have to wait for cool weather or climb into the fridge. Seriously, don't. It's enough to do a few simple steps. First, start clicking on the palate with your tongue, like this. Does it work? Now close your mouth. It's a little more complicated, but go on. Do it for at least 30 seconds. This will create tiny droplets of moisture inside. Second, shut your mouth with your palm and try to exhale. Yes, just so that the cheeks are swollen. This heats the air even more, because as the pressure increases, so does the temperature, and the warmer air will contain more moisture. Third, find some dark background and exhale. When you open your mouth and let the air out, the pressure and temperature inside will drop sharply. The moist air will cool down, and the water steam will condense into tiny droplets of water and will turn into a real small cloud. No, after all, physics is just amazing science. And now, by the way, have you ever noticed the strange lines on your nails? No, not the vertical ones. Those are just fine. We're talking about horizontal relief stripes. Kind of look like dents. You notice them? No? Well, it means that you're all right. These lines are called bows lines, and they work like trees. Annual growth rings. 
It's believed that such lines are caused by metabolic disorders, injuries, or after treatment with certain drugs. Even hypothermia can provoke their appearance. Knowing the speed of the nail growth, doctors can determine what exactly stress caused the body to grow these lines on the nails and what exactly went wrong. Admit it, the longer you study the human body, the more amazing it seems. Here, everything is in its place. Well, except for the third eyelid, of course. But what if we told you that right now, you have an organ in your body that most likely does nothing at all? It doesn't work, and you feel fine. It's a thymus. It's very small and looks like a tiny lung or a very small brain, which for some reason slipped into your chest. If you're over 25 years old, the thymus is already resigned and now is just chilling. But all that time before its legal resignation, it pumped your immune system so that later it would work properly. So to speak, it taught the cells how to recognize the virus, attack it, and destroy it. It was giving them a kind of military training. That's why young children get sick more often than adults. Their thymus hasn't finished yet to train the immune system. Evolution is responsible for the absolute majority of human body features. Unless, of course, you've been bitten by a radioactive spider with all the consequences. That's why each person is, in fact, a separate museum of natural history. And it's quite easy to find evidence of evolution. The easiest way is to put your hand on the table, connect your thumb and little finger, then lift your hand slightly. Most likely, you'll see an outstanding tendon. If you don't have it, you're one of the 10 to 15 percent of people on Earth who were born without this characteristic feature. This tendon connects to the long palm muscle that most of us have, but it makes absolutely no sense as it didn't in the third century. It doesn't make the hand stronger or the grip tighter. Well, at least in the case of a human being. At the same time, the long palm muscle is much more developed in the paws of lemurs and monkeys, that is, creatures that often move with the help of their front limbs. Now, look at that tendon again. This is your inheritance from your monkey ancestor. I'd prefer the car, Grandpa. <laughs> Oh. Another amazing feature is the ability to wiggle your ears. Try to do it right now. Well, either you did or you didn't. Today, such a trick can only entertain friends at a party, but once the ability to move ears saved our ancestors' lives. Until now, three muscles have been attached to our outer ear, which mammals could use to turn their ears in the right direction. This is how they determined the approaching danger and wouldn't let themselves be eaten. However, the ability to move the ears in response to a loud sound is not completely lost. Scientists found out that our bodies still react, but the impulses are not strong enough to be visible. Despite millions Millions of years of evolution, we've preserved many features of our ancestors, and one of them you probably observe every day. If cool wind blows or we hear a pleasant melody, our skin will immediately get goosebumps. Sometimes it's enough just to see something touching, but most often the goosebumps are a reaction to the cold. In any case, it's written in the memory of our ancestors. In response to temperature changes, tiny muscles connected to the hairs lift them up. The skin around the hairs forms a small lump. It looks familiar, although a little strange. But that's all because people aren't fluffy enough. Our animal relatives have this process too. It increases the thermal insulation and helps to keep them warm. Sometimes it's a pity that people can't do it. And finally, the funniest and weirdest rudiment, tail. Yep, you got it right. We have it. At the end of the human spine, there are several conjoined vertebrae. They're called the coccyx. That's all that's left of the tails of our ancestors. Now its only function is to serve as an anchor for some muscles. However, sometimes a child with a real tail can be born because of rare mutations. Oh no, he can't move it, and most often people just cut such rudiments off. And we can understand the parents of tailed children, only the logic of nature isn't quite clear. Why at some point the body just started to malfunction? How do mutations work? Is it possible to control them? But this is already a topic for another video, so if you're interested in it, write about it in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Oh, you can give us some likes too, huh? There you go. Thank you.